Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So in this one here, I want to talk about World Beyond Season 2 because we got our first look at Season 2, which is the final season. And I, I will say, now that I was thinking about it, because after looking at these images here, I don't know if I would recommend Season 1 to even Walking Dead fans. Because I used to always say, like, I would recommend Season 1 to Walking Dead fans only, mostly. If you're excited for the Rick movie and all that, you want something to watch, it will kind of add a little bit to the mythology and stuff of the CRM. It's kind of... You know, it's not don't expect a lot, but it's, you know, it's it's fun, you know, and I do think a binging experience for this show probably would make it a lot better. But anyways, uh, season two, I think the interest is definitely a little bit more there just because season one, nothing actually really happens in terms of the CRM stuff like they, they did give us some stuff and there was some like, things that were exciting at the time, but not that exciting to hold a series and to make it a, a huge point to watch. Right. And so I would say if you're interested now, like if you haven't checked out World Beyond, maybe don't really check out season one and just check out season two when it airs this October. You're going to learn a lot of stuff about these characters. And I think that is where it could be a lot of fun for the story, I, I would say, of, of the Rick movies. And I mean, I'm hoping anyways, like if they don't really reveal too much in World Beyond for the Rick movies, then I definitely, I'm just, I'm not a fan of this show, and I, I really won't see the point in it even coming out. Because the point of World Beyond is to give us some crucial information for the Rick movies. They kind of have to do that. There has to be something really exciting here that made, like, I honestly, I kind of view it like the Loki show, right? Like, the Loki show, I'm not going to get into spoilers or anything like that, but the the show, for the most part, was just kind of, I mean, obviously, Loki, Loki is a beloved character, but, like, at the end of the series, you know what I mean? Like that really set up the MCU. It really set up a lot of what's to come now in the movies and just, or just in general, the MCU. And I think the world, world beyond kind of needs to do that. There has to be a point in its existence. And so I, that's what I'm hoping for. I, I hope it's just not what, what it was in season one. And I hope that season two really does bring it and really does actually get into what the point is or, or, or what the original point was, right? Which is Rick Grimes movie setup. And so obviously we're not going to get some Rick Grimes movie stuff, but like it shouldn't be that crazy to think that Jadis would be there, that there would be some mentions of Rick or there would be some type of thing that really heavily hinted that they were going to see Rick or Rick was involved in some type of, of thing and related to the final episode in the series finale. Right, like that stuff there would make the series worth it. Like, oh, okay, this was actually building to something important. If they don't get to that point, th then there was no point, right? And I'm just saying this stuff mostly because I know that whenever I talk about the Rick stuff, people are just like, oh, you're being too crazy. Like, you can't expect Rick. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, Rick can't be in everything, this and that. But like, that's th this is literally the point of the series. The point of the series was to set up the Rick movie. And I, I just think that you need a lot more. Season one did not deliver. And I, I think season two, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I hope it does. I really, really hope it does. But I, at this point, I, I don't know. But that's something that we'll find out, obviously, this year. Because in four months from now, this show is completely done. <laughs> Which is kind of weird to think. Because it's airing in like a month and a half. And then that's going to go for 10 episodes. And so like early December or something like that, it's done. It's already August 18th. So yeah, four months from now, it's December 18th. Th this show will be done for sure by then. So we'll know our thoughts on World Beyond as a whole, if there, if there is a point to the series, uh, you know what I mean? Like, and I imagine that's, that's where a lot of fans are going to look back or, or maybe start to criticize future spinoffs as like, is there even a point to, to making these spinoffs if it's just like World Beyond, where there is no interest there? I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but I did see an article earlier, and actually I'm not going to pull it up here, but I saw an article saying that the Rick Grimes movies are too late, and a big reason why is because The Walking Dead is burning itself out. That I, first of all, really disagree with. I would say right now, if we're burnt out of anything, it's because for the last year and a half, we've gotten shit all in terms of Walking Dead content. So we're just sick of waiting. I would actually argue after watching episode one that my excitement level has been renewed. Before that, it was just kind of I was excited for it, but it felt like I was waiting forever. Right. Like it just kind of felt like we were always waiting for new content, which is pretty insane because last summer we were waiting all summer. Uh, until October, we got the final episode that we should have got in April 2020, and then we had to wait until February just to get bonus episodes, like bonus episodes. And now, this August, we are like August 22nd, we are finally getting new episodes of The Walking Dead for the first time, really. I'm, I'm ignoring the bonus episodes since um, uh, April 2020, because that's when the original 
season 10 finale was supposed to air. And so when I look at all that, I'm like, yeah, you know what? There's a, a year and a half there, literally the pandemic. It was a year and a half of just waiting around for, for nothing. And I would say, if anything, that's more of what where I feel burnt out from is the last year and a half. Because from when Rick left in November 2018 up until April 2020, that's like a year and a half right there. The pandemic definitely pushed things off a lot. And so I just kind of look at it as like, you know what, like maybe there would there is less interest in the Rick movies. People are very frustrated because I'm very frustrated right now. But I do think once you actually like if you watched episode one of, of The Walking Dead season 11, you're going to get that excitement back right away. Like you're going to get right back into it immediately. And so I, I think that that is such a crazy thing to say. I think Screen Rant actually posted the article. And I just I, I think that's insane. Maybe people feel that right now. But watch next year. Once The Walking Dead's wrapping up and then we get our first teaser of the Rick movie or whatever, people are going to be fired up and freaking out then. That excitement will be there. It, like, you're just, I don't know, I thought that was such a pointless article. But I do think, and the reason why I brought it up, they were talking about the spinoff ideas and how many spinoffs they're having and how people could be maybe burnt out or just sick and tired of The Walking Dead because of all the content. There's not that much content. Yes, they announced a bunch of spinoffs, but World Beyond is ending. Fear the Walking Dead probably has a couple years left. Uh, the Daryl and Carol spinoff is not airing for another two years still. At that point, The Walking Dead's going to be over. I mean, at that point, honestly, in three, in two or three years from now, we're probably going to still have the same amount of shows, two or three shows airing. So, like, uh, I don't really agree with that. But what I do, and my original point, is that those spinoffs will be judged based off of how World Beyond operates. Because World Beyond was judged based off how Fear the Walking Dead was. And Fear the Walking Dead, obviously, at the point, or before World Beyond even aired, everyone hated it. And and so I just, I think that, yeah, these spinoffs, they're not doing too great. All the spinoffs for The Walking Dead haven't been the greatest. But for Fear the Walking Dead, first of all, season six was absolutely just awesome. I, I love that season. And I, I think that World Beyond just needs to get better. There needs to be a point. Otherwise, I mean, that criticism is always going to be there. Anyways, I've ranted on this long enough. I just really wanted to say my point here because I just I've had a lot of thoughts on this. So uh, let's get into some of the images here. And I mean, there's only what seven images here. So it's not like I'll just go quicker on my thoughts here, I guess, through the images. But we have Hope here and two CRM soldiers. Uh, really cool that we actually have or we see other people in CRM gear other than Isabel. So that's cool. But obviously, Hope is taken into the CRM. We saw the cliffhanger at the end of season one. I'm not entirely sure what this is going to mean for her, because the whole purpose of bringing her there is kind of weird to begin with, right? Like, you brought Hope there just because she's smart, basically. <laughs> like, I, I think it's just kind of ridiculous. So I hope that there's more there. I hope that, you know, like, I understand the CRM want well-capable survivors. There has to be more of a reason than that, though. I think that's just kind of, I don't know, that's kind of ridiculous. Like, that doesn't make them that evil, right? Like, that's not something that is that entertaining. But, well, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. There is still that cure aspect to it. So maybe there's there's more of that there, right, with with her father and stuff like that. So that I'm excited for, and we'll see exactly what they, what they mean by that. We do have Elizabeth here and Huck. Uh, it's really cool, the fact that they're mother and daughter, and we know that now. And, um, you know, I guess this is just them at home and we'll kind of see what they're like. I'm, I'm kind of wondering based off of this photo if and, and I hope they don't do that because that is so typical. But like if Huck is starting to like disagree with her mom now, because, you know, even though she, she did that in season one to the group like Hope and, and, and all of them, you know, she started to become she started to like them and they're her friends now. And so now she's like, I hope you I hope you take care of hope. I hope you take care of them. That's I just I hope they don't go down that road because that's just I don't know. That's so typical. That is so predictable. I hope she's just downright evil now and she's a part of the CRM. I think it just makes things more complex, more exciting. And I just yeah, just go down that road. We have Elton here and he found this CRM. Um, I'm just going to say ammo box, but probably not. This is really cool, though. Like this is like some top notch stuff. Like, I mean, Elton is like that's probably the story or Elton and Hope. I'm the most interested in what they, they're doing because Hope is like she's she's within the CRM. So it's always going to be exciting to see what she's up to. Uh, with Elton, I mean, it's like he's on his own and, and like what's next for him, right? Because everyone's been ripped away from him, basically. He's out there with, I can't remember who that guy's name was, but it was that guy that we thought was evil and he's kind of with him now because Silas was taken away. But 
yeah, I'm really interested in, in seeing what happens with Elton because I do think that they could actually. I mean, that's the thing. Like, characters need to die this season for sure. We do need to kill off some of these characters. I think to not kill them off is a, a big missed opportunity. They definitely have to. And um, Elton would, would definitely be on my list, but I mean, they can kill off really anybody. Uh, we have Silas here, and uh, he, like we, we last saw him being taken away from the CRM. I'm not even going to make any predictions here, because this just looks very unrelated and kind of unexciting. But we have this shot here, and this is really cool. We have Elizabeth and uh, Dr. Bennett. And this is the stuff, like, this is the, the big part of the story that needs to be really good. It's th this dynamic right here, and the purpose of everything. We know that they are trying to find a cure. And we know that they were teasing that in season one. Like we saw that all those post credit scenes, they were teasing the stuff going on there. They were teasing some stuff going on there. They need to deliver on that. And they actually need to make that a big part of the story for season two. And I think there's such an easy way to do it. If I'm a writer on that show, AMC hires me and they're like, you know, we're going to get you to come up with the ideas. You don't write because I don't know if you know how to write, <laughs> but like come up with some ideas and we can kind of interpret you or interpret it for you on paper. I'm going to say, well, you guys set up all that stuff in there. Make that the big focal point of season two. Make it that they're trying to work on a cure. The stuff that they're doing is inhumane, though. And it's, you know what I mean? So they're, they're trying to find the right people to help them. And maybe hope is a, a big part in that. And that's where Will and like Felix and that anti CRM group really come into play, right? Like they know what's going on. Maybe some of them were tested on. And so they're trying to, you know what I mean? So it makes it more of like that type of a storyline. It's all about the cure, the stuff that was set up, and it makes it really interesting. And that could definitely tie into the Rick movies because maybe things were successful. Maybe in the past it was successful. And then, you know what I mean? Jadis could have some knowledge of certain things and, and you can really explore more of the cure stuff. Like, it's not that crazy to introduce a cure on The Walking Dead. You could do that. But like, what do you do with it when you have this thing that can actually cure people? What do you do with it? And I think it would be really cool if say, what if Elizabeth was cured of it and certain people were cured of it and they're only giving it to certain people? Like, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do there with that. It, it doesn't have to be just like, oh, this is a cure. So humanity is saved. Well, what if very powerful evil people have that cure and don't want to give it to people? There's so much that you can do here with the Rick movies and all the stuff with like the behind the scenes of the government, like Gimple was talking about. And that's what I would introduce here in season two. I, I would get into that because, again, that's kind of the point of the series. Right. And so, I, like I said, the dynamic between these two characters, their purpose, like this is going to be, for me, the most fascinating part about season two. Uh, but then we have Will here and Iris and uh, they look like they're in a building. So this is probably they're probably meeting. I guess, with some type of anti-CRM group. Uh, this also I'm really fascinated in because I want to know like Will's backstory a little bit more, uh, where he came from, and just how big this group is and etc. because that's definitely going to add more to the mythology. We have this shot here of Felix, and I mean, he's just killing walkers. Nothing more to really read in there. But yeah, this is our first look at Season 2. Overall, it looks good. It definitely looks better than Season 1. But again, I have those concerns and those worries. I, I hope that they do address those big uh, story points that I think that they need to to address the point of the series. So we'll have to wait and see. But anyways, post your thoughts down below. Hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.